Okay, so today we're gonna talk more about uh, test, uh, test elements and how they ensure against the existence of test ideals. But now we're gonna we're gonna really specialize the case that matter the most. Uh, so so this is section seven point two, and so. So the subject of test ideals along, uh, let's say, a radical, uh, let's say, Cartier ideals. Um, and so for this, we're going to fix a Cartier module, part comma C. Uh, and so we may assume that C lives inside CR. Okay, so we can be more concrete. So fix a Cartier module like that. Cartier. When people work in this setup, maybe they just say, okay, let's take a Cartier pair. That's the other word we would see. Um, and so remember that then we denote by I R comma C the set of C ideals. Uh, what is this? These are simply the so what you want are the you know, sub abelian groups of R that are compatible with the action of C. But since the degree zero component of C is R itself, they have to be compatible with the action of R. And so they are ideals, first of all. So we're going to take the ideals of R. Okay. Say R ideals, R sub modules of R, such that. Let's put it right here. Um, you know, they, they are submodules with respect to C. So C of A is contained in A. Right? So this means two things, right? This means that this is a Cartier submodule. Module, right? That's what we're saying. But moreover, since this is a billion, the same thing to say that this is a Cartier portion. And you see that in the fact that the other way to express this condition, right, is that you write that when you look at a map, C here, right, in CE, this descends to the, the close of space defined by A, or it descends to the quadrant. Okay, there is a canonical quotient there. Let's call it pi. R goes to R bar, class modulo A. So you get another map here. Which is if we're going to push forward pi. Okay. And then, so the point is that we are looking at those A for which phi descends. Okay. That's the picture to have in mind. Right? So the point is that. Of course, here you have A inside here. So if you want to have a, an exact sequence here, so we're looking at something like this. So you take the exact sequence, you push it forward along for beams. That's an exact thing. And so you, you gain, okay. The condition you see is that this is inside here, right? And once this is inside here, then the quotient is automatically induced, right? 
general abstract nonsense from super basic algebra. Or equivalently, once a portion exists, the kernel has to be inside that, right? That, you remember like that, right, from, from algebra. Whenever you have a commutative square, you have an induced map of kernels or equivalently on kernels. And that's what is happening. So, okay, so this is the picture we want. We want to look at those A's uh, for which this is true. Okay? And the idea is that the more A's there are, the more singular the pair is. Okay, so, so we look at those. Um, so recall, sorry, the key properties. Um, so when you look at this thing, this of course lives inside the set of ideals. But remember that the set of ideals so far is a lattice under union and intersection, right? So here you have union, you have intersection. Uh, actually, you have a top element, you have a bottom element, and you have this rich structure there. And so what this is, is a sub lattice of that, sub lattice. So this was supposed to be an exercise for you to verify this, but it's really cool, right? Like, if two elements are, if two ideals are C ideals, so is the union, so is the intersection, and very trivially, zero is a C ideal and one is a C ideal. Okay. I'll, way less trivial is the fact that um, I did it right here. So well, let me put the property here. So this was supposed to be an exercise a while ago, but if you take a C ideal, you take any ideal of R, okay? So when you look at the column ideal, this automatically is a C ideal. So this is a cool observation because it has the implication, it has two implications. Well, the first implication is that then the associated primes of R modulo A, right? In particular, the minimal primes of A, they are all um, C ideals. Okay, so the lattice is closed under. Um, let's say prime decomposition. The minimal primes and the associated primes are going to be there, okay? Um, and in particular, if A, well, if A is a C ideal, then the radical is in there. Okay? So these are the basic properties. So you see how this, this works, right? Because if the associated primes are here, then so are the minimal primes, but the radical is just intersection. So it's just that. Um, however, so remember that if the pair are from a C is a pure, Then uh, all C ideals are radical. And, uh, and there are kind of anything. So you see how purity is important for this to work. Right? Because if we look at sigma, uh, 
um, right? Because so, and let me do an example. So let's look at let's just take a prime ideal because you see that what this tells you is that the prime ideals are the most important ones in this business, right? Because if you know that the prime ideals are there, then by taking intersections and sums and everything, you get everything. So, but you see, for example, if you have P that contains sigma, um, right? Actually, we saw that this closed subspace inside the spectrum is the non FP locus. So, if you take a prime P, in the non pure locus, that automatically is the ideal. So remember, this is a non pure locus. If you take a prime there, then automatically this is in here. And of course, there can be a building, right? Elements there. If you have, you know, you, you can cook it up so that you have an arbitrary subtle, right? And of course, there are so many points there that there is no reason for God to be to be finite, right? So you see that the non-purity of the pair tells you about like more or less whether or not there are finally many of these primes. Okay. So uh, and actually um, last so we also have this respect of our comacy, the set of our comacy. These are the spectra of centers of purity. And these are, by definition, the CA deals. Okay. That happen to be primes. Okay. But are not in here. Uh, okay. The goal, actually, of what we're doing at this point is to prove that there are finally many of them. Okay. So we want to prove that there are finally many of them. Even if uh, the pair is not a pure. Okay. So for that, we need to play with this uh, test ideals along radical or t ideals. Um, okay, so this is like a little summary of things we have done before. Let's get into business. Any question with this? So, for example, we have seen that every regularity mm, means sort of the absence of these things. So this point E tells you where the singularities are the most severe. Uh, I would like to introduce or help recall a few notions. Uh, definition. Uh, let's take an element here, a CAD. Okay. Um, so we say the following we say that R, C is non-degenerate along A 
uh, if the minimal primes of A are centers of FPRT. Let me just write down CFTs. Okay. So what am I saying? By the previous remark, we know that the centers of FQRT are going to be C ideals. Pardon. We know that the minimal primes of A are going to be C ideals. All I'm asking for is that they avoid the image of sigma. In other words, they don't contain sigma. OK? So B. So here is the concept, uh, the really important concept for us. We're going to say that R comma C is purely a regular along A. Um, you will see in other contexts, perhaps more geometric people say near A. They mean near the variety cut out by A. Uh, if Um, well, first of all, let's say uh, it's not, but well, it's non degenerate. Along A, that's the first condition non degeneracy. And second, uh, every proper, remember proper means just different from one, uh, C ideal, C ideal of R comma C is contained Uh, let me continue over here a little bit. It's contained in at least one minimal prime of A. So it's contained in at least one minimal prime of R comma, a uh, minimal prime of A, sorry. So purely a regular along A means two things. First of all, all minimal primes of A are centers of F purity. And whenever you have any other C ideal, it has to be contained in at least one of those minimal primes. Okay? So but in, actually in that case, you know, those minimal primes of A are the maximal centers of F purity because they're gonna contain all possible centers of F purity. So in that case, the minimal primes of A are referred to uh, as maximal CFTs. Any questions so far with these definitions? Uh, so the second ingredient, uh, so the final definition, um, I guess I could say it in words, but let's just write it down. Uh, so what is the C? R itself, people say this R is purely a regular along A. And what they mean is that if so is the pair R comma C R A. Okay, so 
What am I saying here? What is this? Do you remember this Cartier algebra here is a Cartier algebra of all maps phi for which A is a is a is a, is a, is a compatible ideal. Right? So I'm thinking that so this is let's say this is equal to all the fees such that phi descends to A or to R module A. So this was one of the examples we were playing with. So that forms a Cartier algebra, and by definition, A is going to be a C ideal of that Cartier algebra. Right? And so if A happens to be, or if this Cartier pair happens to be purely regular along A, then we simply say that R is purely a regular along A. Okay. So So what is the, the relationship with, with, uh, between this and a regularity? Well, this is this is an important generalization of F regularity, and experience shows this is a uh, like a good way to deal with F regularity in general, to allow you to have this freedom to throw an A over there. So let's let's make a few remarks. Uh, are there remarks I have over here? Well, first of all, notice that R comma C is a regular if and only if R comma C is purely a regular along along who? V zero ideal. Okay, right. Think about it. Like the zero ideal cuts out uh, what variety or what uh, close of space, the whole space, right? V of zero is the whole spectrum. So saying that R comma C is purely a regular, let's say along everywhere, is just to say that it is a regular. Okay. So, so this definitely generalizes the notion we had for a regularity. Um, what else? Uh -huh. Also, I would like to make a remark of what, what non degeneracy means. It's just a rephrasing of prime avoidance. So that's it. This is the first remark. Second remark is that by prime avoidance, um, R comma C uh, is, let me say, non degenerate along A if and only if. Well, let's say we can say, well, it doesn't matter because they cut out the same. Uh, the same, the same uh, close subset. So either this one, or you can also use sigma. So by definition, it means that uh, these two ideals um, are not contained in any minimum prime of A. But the prime avoidance would be the same to say that they are not contained in the union of the minimal primes. So, so they are not contained in the union, let me say, of the minimal primes of A. So P minimal prime. Well, since I'm talking about the minimal ones, I could, I, I could well do the sum over the associated prime, right? Because if there is an associated prime that is an embedded prime, well, it is containing a minimal one. So the union 
is at the end over the minimal point. So I can, I can write here P associated prime of R module A. Great. There may be embedded ones, but they will contain the minimal ones. So this union I brought here is really over the minimal prime. So by prime avoidance saying that this avoid every single minimal prime is the exact same thing to the seemingly weaker condition that is not in the union. Okay, just prime avoidance. And this is the this is the version we're gonna be playing with. Um, so here actually I'm gonna be denoted, denoting this thing here by Q, this whole union here. So as a remark, right, what would happen if A is zero? What is this union? Famously, what is the union of all the minimal primes of a ring? Or the union of all, you know, uh, associated primes? That's the zero, that's the set of zero divisors, right? So if A were zero, I'm saying here that the image or sigma, uh, they are not made entirely of zero divisors. But there is an element that is a non-zero divisor that is containing one of them. Okay. When you play with A in general, well, just say the exact same thing, but modulo A. That there is a non-zero divisor, uh, modulo A that is containing the image. Okay, so uh, that's what we're doing. Because right, like I could well take C to be zero, the zero cartel. So to speak. Um, well, the P zero piece always has to be R, but I would say, okay, C1 is going to be three. And then I'm saying, no, so I'm trying to avoid saying things like that. Uh, so they, that's, that's this notion of non degeneracy. Um, so it's just a minimal level of sanity just to make sure that we're saying things that are meaningful. Okay, that's a good remark. Um, Um, observation exercise. I guess then we can go for another remark, which you're going to have to do as an exercise. If R, C, let me say is purely a regular along A, then uh, let's say R, C, and let me just say R bar, comma C. You see, C is going to act on R, C is going to act on R module A. This R is regular. So this is uh I'm saying I'm saying I'm saying stupid thing here. Um sorry, only R module A. Okay, and the converse is true. Uh -huh. Converse true. If R is a good break. Okay. So I was thinking of something else. Uh, let's think about it. And this is, a, so the next thing is another remark. Uh, well, this is a little exercise for you. Remark, exercise. The next one is truly important. Uh, actually, there is a sequence of exercises in the notes 
but I'm not sure if you have seen them. But this is like the third one in that sequence, which they all use the same trick. Uh, and we're going to be using it actually quite a bit. So this is this is this thing, for example. Um, so R comma C is not degenerate. Along A, if and only if there exists E sufficiently large and phi is CE such that phi, the image of that single phi, um, avoids every minimal prime of A. Okay, this is, the point is that this is not contained in every minimal prime or equivalently. It's not contained, just to say very, just to say like very shortly, it's not contained in Q. Well, Q is the same union I wrote over there. Okay? You see, so definitely this implies this. But the converse is true. Um, so I wrote the hint in the in the in the, in the, in the notes, but it's the exact same hint uh, of two previous exercises. So so the point is like what this means really is that there will be a sum of different fees of different degrees. Uh, let's say e one v one r one blah, 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 plus V, E2, R2, is equal to one. That's what it means. So you're gonna have B, what, a PK, let's say, PK, EK, uh, and different R case. This image is, is, is equal to one, right? That's, that's literally what not degeneracy means. You can find those Vs of potentially different degree of those E1s, E2, so on. So that you can write down one as, as, as that sum. But why is it that um, you can find one single fee? That's the exercise. Actually, if I remember correctly, when Luis was, uh, as, 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 was presenting the lecture, he proves something there uh, about the different notions of impurity, right? Um, and that, that, the exact same proof, you can modify it. It go from here to here. So the proof is start saying that let's take E to be the product of E1, E2, and then you take different powers of these guys to make it to be the same degree, and then you have to do a local argument and so on. But it's a standard trick that is used over and over and over. And that's the way to go from here to here. So actually, so then you use, so in, in that way you use that for impurity. Then there's another exercise and you have to use for irregularity. And now this is the same thing, but for around the generosity. It's just a point like all these properties can be detected by one single thing. Okay? But in principle, by definition, you would have to use a collection of them. Okay? So this is the way in which we're going to think about non This This is a stronger way. Okay. Um, ba -ba -da -ba 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 -ba. Oh, here's another wonderful exercise. Uh, this exercise maybe deserves a star, meaning that it's a hard one. So. If you, if you try to do it and you get uh, a bit stuck with it, let me know and I can give you a hint. Actually, I meant to write down the hint, but I, now that I see here, I, I think I forgot to do it. So this is supposed to teach you about the nature of things. So another observation exercise. So R comma C is non-degenerate. 
our head Um, I think there is a mistake here. My, my notes, uh, big ones. Okay. Well, let me let me say what I know is, is true. Then A is right on. First of all. What does that mean? Uh, well, first of all, it has no embedded primes. So all its minimal primes, so all its associated primes are minimal. No embedded primes. And moreover, well, the, the intersection of the minimal primes is equal to A. So that's, that's great. Um, but actually something stronger happens. Uh, and moreover, The minimal primes are pairwise co-prime. In particular, this means that when you have an irregular pair, uh, R has to be a product of domains. This is this wonderful fact that an irregular ring has to be a product of irregular domains, right? So geometrically, A is going to cut out a variety, like, well, not a variety, sorry, a close of space. Uh, it is radical. But this pairwise prime means that when you look at the irreducible components, they don't intersect pairwise. So the irreducible components are going to be a whole bunch of components given by centers of impurity, and they don't talk to one another. They're completely disjoint. And so if A were zero, that means that the reducible components of R are completely disjoint. And so by the Chinese uh, reminder theorem, it is a product. Okay, so this is, this is, a, this is a wonderful result here. Uh, Ah, okay, then I forgot to say something else. Okay, so, ah, uh, uh, no, no, it, this, this is fine. No, if R, oh, no, sorry, 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 sorry. I'm saying nonsense here. Ah, I see what my problem is. Yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. This is not a hypothesis. If R, C is purely irregular, that's what I meant to say. Sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> purely irregular along A, yeah, then it is a pure, is a pure, which means that A has to be radical, but the moreover part is that then it, it's, its minimal primes are all pairwise co-prime. Geometrically speaking, the reducible components of A don't talk to one another, they just see one another. And that's gonna, that's gonna play a role uh, to prove that irregular rings are normal. One of their famous properties. Okay. Um, any questions so far? Um, I'm not really running out of shock. So it's time to write down the most important theorem in this whole business. It's the following. So this is what we want to prove. Our theorem.
Uh, this stream is due to so many people in so many forms, but so this is the final product. Um, yeah, so the setup is the following. So we're going to take a pair as before. We're going to take uh, A to be a CA deal. Um, but I'm going to ask for A to be radical. Radical and such that R, C is non degenerate. Um, along okay. That's, those are my hypotheses. And here comes the existence of strong test elements or principal test elements. Sorry about that. So then look at this. There exists um, C that is not a zero divisor, uh, sorry, a zero, yeah, a zero divisor module A. So there is a C that avoids Q. In other words, it avoids, remember Q was this union of minimal primes. Uh, so C avoids every single minimal primes. Geometrically speaking, C doesn't vanish along an entire irreducible components of the of V of A, of the zero locus of A. Okay? That's what this means. Uh, um, yeah, but for example, the most important case that say in which A is prime, it just means C is not without P. So then there, there exists the C, or more geometrically too, right? What does this mean? This means that when you localize along C, the open you get contains every single minimal primes. So you don't lose irreducible components when you localize at DC. That's another way to see it. So. This is very dumb, i.e., the principal open defined by C contains all these pieces. Okay, so that's that's the point actually. Um, okay, there's a C in there such that what? Where's the remote? Okay, such that for all R avoiding Q, but of course we are, right? R in here. Uh, and same here, right? So I didn't one. So there it is R avoiding Q. So for all R avoiding Q, there exists E in principle gigantic, but there exists such a thing. Uh, and phi in here, such that, for all such that. What happens? Okay, so let's think about it again. So the theorem says that there is a C 
fractal, when you take any element of R of what in Q, you can find a phi that is going to send that element R to C. Okay. So this is the real theorem. Okay. And so this is stronger than being a test element. Let's see. Okay, so let's continue. The, the theory will stop. Okay. For the third war, uh, the ideal. Let's see if one can see. Yeah, one can see the ideal tau r comma c along A, which I'm going to define as simply C acting on C, which is to say this is RC plus C plus C, which is to say um, this is just a, a huge sum over all E's in N and all fees in CE. And uh, what you do here, I think here I should have written down actually. No, yeah, like that. Uh -huh. so, uh, so to have an idea here, I should write P is over star uh, CR. So CR is a principal ideal. The principal ideal is generated by C. And then I take the action of phi on, on all that. Okay. And well, every single one of this is an ideal, right? Because phi is an R linear map. And so the image should be an R sub module R, aka ideal. And then you can you can take that huge sum. Okay. But what matters is that when you do this, this idea has the following properties. So that idea has the following properties. Slowly. Properties um, A. First of all, the test idea itself avoids all minimal primes of A. E. It is compatible. It is, it is a C ideal that avoids Q so far. And C is the stellar property this ideal has. E is, is in, 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 in the property C means that it is a minimal with respect to these two properties. Okay, so if V is a C ideal, but a voice Q automatically has to contain power.
Okay, it's uh, so I was telling you that all these C ideals, all these C ideals, let me see here, are in principle bad things. You know, like these are very singular things. This means that the data that we're playing with is very singular. So the more of them you have, the more in problems you are. Okay, if you want to prove things. Um, and so the test ideal, this test ideal is going to give you a bound, a lower bound on how many of them there can be. Right? So the bigger the test ideal is, the, the least bees you will have. Okay? So, yeah. Um, Okay, so yeah, this is this is the, the really a truly truly important theorem in the theory. Okay, and you remember how we were using test modules to prove finiteness of, of, of substructures and so on. So these guys are, are going to be the things that are gonna let us uh, define or sorry to prove that they're kind of an example of beauty. You definitely need this extra data. So, so let's give names to things. Um, so first of all, let's make a few remarks, okay? Uh, where are we here? I want this to be visible. Uh -huh. So first of all, this ideal, the name it has is has ideal of R comma C, and what do you think we have to add along A? Okay, that's the name it has. Um, and so it is characterized, right? It is characterized according to this by being the smallest C ideal that avoids all minimal primes of B. Okay? What the theory tells you is that it exists. Okay? And it exists because the existence of this test elements. Okay? So that's the way to make an interpretation of this theorem. Um, we refer to any such C. Uh, where, where do we write down? Uh, okay, I guess I have to move now. So we refer to C, I'm sorry, this way. Do, 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 do. Let's see. So, it is such a C. C. It's called, it's called by different names. It's called principal test elements. Okay, so it's stronger than being a test element. That's the next remark. Remember that a test element would be essentially an element of, of the test ideal. Uh, that avoids every minimal prime. But this, this principal one is a test element, but it's much stronger than that. Oops. Oh, this is old stuff. So let's make a few remarks about that. What is it? Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the this is not part of the theory. This is more of a definition. Definition: the elements of how a r comma c that are non degenerate, i.e., avoids q, are called test elements. Of 
uh, r comma c along a. Okay, a principal test element. Uh, so notice that the notice that c is an element of tau. You see, because it's it's, it's in here. <laughs> if you just let's see, I can write down here like one instead of r and zero for the whole part. So a principal test element is a test element, but not every test element is a principal test element. We have almost proved the existence of test element for in this context, at least when a is zero. But the, the existence of the principal test elements is much more delicate. Okay. So in fact, what this also shows is that the test ideal is generated by principal test elements. Okay. It is obviously generated by test elements because the test elements are essentially their elements, <laughs> but the principal ones are very special ones. Okay. Um, so, do, 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 do. Uh -huh. Actually, uh, let me make a few remarks, and then we can start working on the proof. I don't know, questions with this? Okay, okay, okay. You can think of the existence of this principle of these elements almost as the existence of resolution of singularities for this business. Somehow it's analogous to that. But it's a much easier statement. So. So remark. So look at this nice remark. Well, it, it is an exercise. Every remark is an exercise. So if you have C, a principle has elements, let us say R comma C A, right? R comma C along A, okay, then so is um, phi of C for all E and all phi in C. Okay. So, in particular, a test element is a sum of principal ones. Um, more remarks. I think we can do these remarks and then work on the proof next time. So, um, the second remark, I think I can write it down here. One more, see, I think so, yeah. So, then we have a very nice decomposition of, of the whole system, of the whole uh, lattice of, of, of CL, of CIDLs. Uh, notice that, so, we can split. The CIDLs into two groups. First of all, they will be the ones containing Q. So the ones that are contained at least one minimal prime of, of, of R in that center of a purity. And a complete disjoint union. Maybe let's write it down like this. How do you write this joint union? Like this? Mm -hmm. This is uh, like a union square. Uh -huh. 
And then you will have the piece in here uh, that are contained Look at that. So actually, I really would like to do the, the specific example here of the case in which A is a single prime. Let's say A is prime as an example, just for you guys to see how pretty this is. Okay. At this point, it's the most important example, really, no doubt about that. So look at what that means. It means that the lattice of CIDLs is split in two worlds. First of all, there are those containing P and those that contain the test ideal, right? And so it means that if you want to see this part, what you have to do, you localize at that prime. So you localize at that center of purity and you see those. And then if you want to see the rest, what you do, you quotient by the test ideal. Okay. And we'll, we'll use that, I think, quite a bit. Uh, because, so what you see here is that there are two constructions governing the theory of F singularities. This localization part has to do with the, the how do you call it, the, the, the Cartier core map, localization as centers of impurity. And both of the test ideals. You know, so you can say, you know, like if you want to study an ideal, there are two key operations, localizations and quotients. And so there is an analogous description for, for F singularities. You know, if, if, you, if you focus on studying C ideals, which are these two things, uh, but there are like two more refined objects doing the job, tau and something that we're gonna see, we're gonna call beta which is the construction of F splitting primes, so Cartier core map, okay? So we got this part, uh, what are my notes? And, and so what are the conclusions out of this? So, hmm, we took my notes. Is, it, is this one? This is my, yeah. So what is the, what is the automatic conclusion? So, that the first conclusion is that R comma C is purely a regular along A if and only if what happens to this to this site is empty. Right? Pure regularity literally means by definition that whatever this is is empty that whenever you have a C ideal, it has to be contained in one of the minimal primes. So this is empty. And how can that be empty? Well, if and only if this guy is R. Well, not empty. Uh, well, they are not empty, but equal to R as uh, the idea R. The only possible C ideal that can be here is one, the, gener the one generated by one. So if and only if tau AR comma C, equals to one, or which is the same thing as all. Okay? Because actually, well, I think I should put it as an exercise. I didn't do it, but if I recall, I would do it. The locus cut out by this ideal is a non, is a, the non-purely of regular locus. But I should have put it there. No, ah, actually, I haven't put it yet. But the point is that this commutes with localizations. And so you can, you can think of it as the thing cutting out the number of pure regular locus. But we haven't done that yet. Uh, at least I haven't tried it. So, mm -hmm. so the, the next remark is that if B is a test element, it doesn't have to be principal, it just has to be a test element. Then, um, okay. 
this, this really follows from, well, not follows, but it's, it's things we have observed before. Blah, blah, blah. So, that's okay. Uh huh. And the last remark is that I want you guys to prove that R, C is purely of regular. Along A, if and only if, when you guys to tell me if and only if, which element is a principal test element? The pure regularity of R is equivalent to an element being a principal test element. What do you think that element is? One. If one in R is the principal test element. This direction is trivial because if one is a principal test element, then it lives in the test element and the test idea. And therefore the test idea has to be R. And therefore, you know, the pair has to be purely regular. The other direction is slightly most more interesting, but it's the exact same trick. Um, because uh, if you have something that is purely regular, you know that one is an element here. So you know that one is a test element. So essentially what this is telling you is that the only way in which one can be a test element is if it is a principal test element. Okay. So literally being purely regular means that one, the element one is a test element. But I'm claiming that when, whenever it is a test element, it happens to be a principal test element. And the proof of that is the exact same tr trick I was telling you about earlier. The one that whenever you have a system of phi, so sum is one, then you can find a common power, blah, 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 blah. It's the literal same trick that we have been using at this point in our fifth or fourth exercise. But that is this one, okay? So, Uh, let's see. Uh, what else do I want to say? Uh, yeah, I think we can stop here. So next time we're going to prove this theorem. We're going to prove that the principal test elements exist, and then we can be very proud of ourselves because it's a cool thing. But let's, let's stop here. The CM person for a few more weeks. Or two. Okay, goodbye, Wagner.